Good evening, everyone. My name's Heath Haskins, Code Primate, and I forgot to start up some music, so let's get that going in the background for you guys. There you go. A little bit of, a little bit of a noise, if you will. Turn this down just a little bit. There we go. So, <clears throat> I had a question, and then I've had this question multiple times. How did you make the create the the grab script? The the same thing that Defaultio did inside his video game, the the one that you're doing inside your lumber. It's something that a lot of people have asked about, and a lot of people have had. And you guys haven't had a scripting video in a really long time. So before I get started, I am going to tell you I'm going to cheat. Okay, I have my actual script pulled up right here all right i've got it in visual code um i pulled out everything out that i uh i did inside my actual game and if you don't believe me there's the original code uh it's got a bunch of extra stuff on top of it okay there's a there's a context there's a, a checker to see if you have something in your hand uh it also checks to see that you're not grabbing like billions of miles away anyhow the point is um this is the script i'm going to be like showing you and step by step breaking it down how to actually create this script so whenever you're inside uh the, the roblox studio you're going to go down here to the starter scripts and you're going to create uh, a new oh gosh local script and forgive me if i'm switching in between like c sharp and lua because I've, I've been working with a lot of c sharp and i've also been working with like a, a lot of cold fusion so I may mess this up a few times. Uh, is that big enough? That's probably not big enough. Let's go a little bit bigger. There we go. How's that look on the screen? Let's go. Let's go look. That's uh, yeah, it's okay. That's okay. We can we can work with that. That's cool. Let me pull up my reference. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is just comment uh, grab script. And uh, did we rename this one? No. Rename your script to grab. It does have to be local, by the way. Uh, you cannot do a server-side script because you won't be able to grab this stuff. Um, we want to do a local, and we're going to call it CAS. This is the contact context action service. And we're going to do game .get service context action service, just like that. Next, we're going to create a couple of variables. The first one is going to be called grab object. We're going to set it to nil. Oh, I don't need that. That's a that's a C-sharp thing. Uh, next one's going to be grab start. Whoa. Local grab start equals false. Okay, what else do I have here? <coughs> Local dragger equals nil. And we'll get to that in a second. The dragger is actually the, the thing that you see. I, I do want to kind of explain that real quick. So whenever you see a part out there inside Lumber Tycoon 2, right? Um, the part is actually the wood. So when you see a piece of wood sitting out there, it's just a part that has like two caps and some texture to it, that's it. So the other thing that you see is whenever you pick something up, you get this like um, weird ball looking thing, right? And it's the color of like blue, like that. And it's really small, but it's only local to you. That's how that's how we know that it's a local script. Okay. Whoa. And usually that ball is like in in the middle. Uh, it's not exactly right there. It's like it's like attached like that, right? That is what we are calling the grab or the dragger. That's the thing that actually does the movement. Okay. So let's go back over the the grab strip. Gra grab. Strip. Wow. I'm actually a little nervous. I'm a little nervous that I'm going to mess up the script, so please bear with me. Uh, my ADHD has taken off with me tonight. Okay, <clears throat> so the dragger script, uh, the dragger object we're going to call nil. Uh, okay, a couple of objects that we need to here. We can we can group that up there with those. These are all going to be context. Uh, local player equals game dot players dot local player, and you can only use local player inside a local script. Uh, you can't do that inside the server. Local character equals player. Whoop, player 
dot character. Then we're going to do local mouse equals player get mouse. Now this is all in context to itself, okay? So we could draw this out in the long term of like each one of these is like instead of saying player here and player here, we could just say game players, blah, blah, blah. But to make our life simpler, I just created a, an object called players so I don't have to type this out every single time. That way it's faster. Just trust me. Um, okay, so next we're going to set up a couple things. First thing we're going to do is called function grab. And um, action name, user, ooh, let's get this way. User input state and input object. Whoa, object, like that, okay? Okay, okay. I'm going to leave that one alone for right now because we're gonna need a couple of more functions and I wanna make sure we put those in there. So the next one that I, I create is a weld. So in order to take our dragger and weld it to the part that we want, you're gonna to have to have this in there so the two parts will weld to each other. The next one's called function weld between. And then we're gonna give it uh, A and B. Those are gonna be our two objects that we want to weld together. Why did you do brick color? Crazy. And then the last one's gonna be function add mover to part. And those are gonna be the, the three functions that we use. <coughs> now, oh wait, 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 there, there's one more. Oh gosh, I almost missed this one that completely. Function create drag ball. So that's the one that actually creates it. So uh, the first part is the function grab. This is what we're going to be checking to see if the, the player pushed down on the mouse, let go of the mouse, and then what to do during those states. The weld in between is gonna be two parts that we want to weld together. The add mover is on the dragger itself. That's where we're going to add the, um, the body mover. Uh, so the part can move around. And the last part is uh, create the drag ball. So when the person clicks, we check a certain place. If it's there, we create the drag ball and then we, we're gonna weld it and then we're gonna add a mover. So all of those should be functions that you have typed out already. Uh, CAS, which is our context action service. We're going to bind an action and call it grab uh, and pass in grab again. Oh, the function. <laughs> what we're calling it, what the function is, uh, false, but I don't know why, why do you put false after that one? False. And then we want, uh, enumeration, user input, uh, in user input type and mouse button one, I think. Sorry. Yeah. And then just for fun, we're going to add enumeration key code button R2. That way, <clears throat> for those of you that are programming with uh, controllers, the R1 key does the same thing as the grab. Now this doesn't quite work the same with that because, um, actually, let's do this. Let's take that out because you would have to figure out where the cursor is on the screen. That's a totally different, that's, that's beyond the scope of what I'm teaching you tonight. We got a lot of code to go through, so I hope you've brought your coffee and your popcorn and you're sitting, sitting down <coughs> programming along with me. Mm, that looks horrible. Okay, let's space this out a little bit. There we go, that's good. So, um, the small ones, Let's do the create drag ball first because this is nice and easy. Okay, local drag ball. That uh, that instance that we have up there, that that variable, we're gonna call instance instance dot new and part uh, drag ball dot color brick color. We're going to make that brick color dot new and call it electric blue. Oh, got an extra set of parentheses there. Take those out. So basically, whoa, 
Oh, this is going to be creating the object first. All right, so we're just setting the properties, but we're doing it all by um, all by material code instead of building out a, a drag ball and then adding stuff to it later. So enumeration, sorry, <coughs> drag ball dot material. So this is going to be setting the material. We're going to do enumeration dot material dot wood. Next is going to be the size. Let's do drag ball dot size equals vector three dot new and I'm gonna make this point two point two point two point two point two point two so that makes it kinda of tiny it's small enough that it's not going to like obscure the, the whole object we, we don't want like a big planet appearing and just to move a little bitty part so I mean you could if you wanted to we can make it like 10 anyhow uh, drag ball dot shape is going to be equal to a ball like that and then drag ball dot name we're gonna call it drag ball and that takes a, a, a string drag ball dot parent is going to be workspace and we are going to return return drag ball so <clears throat> basically we are creating a new instance of a part we're setting it to the color blue we're making the material uh, wood we're setting its size to 0 0.2 0 0.2 0 0.2 um, and then this really should be a variable and we should put it up at the top in fact all these could be variables and we stick them up to the top but uh, for time's sake the we're, we're not doing that so this is everything that you need to know about, about the drag ball um, oh and it's not a t it's not anchored should it be anchored? No, we're not going to anchor it because then it wouldn't move around. So, all right. Next, we're going to work on the add mover. <sighs> oh, gosh. That is a lot of script, isn't it? Okay. Local new mover equals instance dot new and body position. Body position. That is a body mover. So, uh, new mover dot parent will be the part that we passed in. So whatever the uh, the part we could we could add a mover to basically anything. Um, we want to do new mover dot max force equals vector three dot new. Why did I do that? Forty thousand, forty thousand, forty thousand. That's probably why it moves around so well. So four, one, two, three, four, four, one, two, three, four. So whenever you add a body mover to something, it has to have a max force. That's not that's not how much force it's actually giving. That's just the maximum that it can do. So I, I guess I give it a really big number that way. If it needs to move more, we could. Uh, the next one's going to be dot p, and uh, this stands for force. And then the next one's going to be dot D, which is the dampening, dampener. And that's how long it takes to move or to get to that position. And we're just going to put it at a thousand. Next uh, property is new mover dot position. And we're going to set it equal to the part dot position. Since we're working with a sphere, position like that. Since we're working with the sphere, the position uh, that we're putting the mover is directly in the center of the ball that's going to get created. Next is new mover dot name equals mover. Just like that. Oh, I don't want to save. Who needs saving anyway? So um, that is it for that. Hmm. Body gyro. Why did I put in body gyro? Rot offset equals instance dot new new frame. And parent equals part. Oh. Okay, hold on. Do I actually use rot mover at all? I do use rot mover, don't I? 
Okay, hold on. Looking through the code, I use that rot offset. Rot mover. I really do. I add rot mover to it. So, um, okay. So that's not the only part that we do to the add mover. We're going to do uh, local new new rot equals instance dot uh, new. I'm going off the top of my head here. Body gyro. So we, we're going to have to create a gyro. And basically it's going to be the same thing as the top. So new mover dot parent is going to be the part that we passed in. Oh, not new mover, new rot. Sorry, copy. Copy, paste, there we go. New rot dot max force. Do we have a max torque? Max torque equals vector three dot new. And we'll pass in 30,000. Was it 30,000, 40,000? No, 3,000, 3,000. Doesn't have to be crazy. There we go. So we want it to be able to rotate maximum 3,000 on all axes, X, Y, Z. Next is new mover, uh, new rot dot P. Is there a dot P? Yeah. And we're gonna set that equal to our maxes new rot dot d which is the dampening and we'll put it at half of what it is for the mover uh new mover no new rot new rot dot c frame equals gain dot workspace whoa gam dot workspace dot current camera dot C frame. Hmm. Okay. So why did I give it the same C frame as the current camera? Because the C frame would be wrong, wouldn't it? Okay. Fine. New rot dot parent or dot name equals rot mover. We're going to go ahead and leave the rot offset alone because I don't think I use rot offset up in the top somewhere. Oh, I do use it. It's inside the C angles. Why would I do that? Just looking. Okay, fine, fine. We'll add a rot offset. <clears> okay, <throat> local um, rot offset equals instance dot new C frame C frame value rot offset dot name. We're gonna call it rot offset. And then rot offset dot parent equals part. So the part that we passed in. So we're giving a new C frame, a new body gyro, and a new position to the body mover or to the, the drag ball that we pass in. In fact, if we wanted to, we could call these functions inside the create ball. And I'll, I'll look later and see if that's uh, that's the case. Okay, so that should be it for those. Do we need to return anything? I don't think we need to return. No, it's just a function call. So, nice and complicated. Everybody lost so far? Yes? Okay. <laughs> All right. The weld looks like a, a little bit easier one. So I hope this uh, this will help you out a little bit. Okay. Local weld equals instance dot new and we're going to call it a weld right there um oh i called it manual weld manual manual i'll go with manual 
manual weld. There we go. And we're going to call it on part A. So the part that we pulled in is where we're, that's the parent we're going to put it on. Um, and then we're going to do weld dot C zero equals um, A dot C frame inverse times B dot C frame. Get the C frame of B relative to A. Okay, fine. And then weld dot part zero equals A. Weld dot part one equals B. Just like that. And we can return the weld. So, does everybody kind of follow along with what that one is? Uh, I'm not quite sure I understand what the CO is. I guess it's just the opposite of what the uh, the other C frame is, because it'd be times the inverse of the C frame. So, um, anyhow, basically you create a new weld, and you tell it part one, part two, and it welds those two pieces together and places them relative to each other C frame. And then it returns it to you for some reason. But I don't think it actually needs to return. But that's fine. Okay. <laughs> um, how far along are we? We are 21 minutes. Oh gosh, we have got some coding to do. So let's put double spaces in between all of our functions to make it a little bit more readable. I know that this, this stuff kind of gets really junked up sometimes. Um, and this whole thing could just break and I, I not know exactly where I broke it at. <clears throat> if that turns out to be the case, I will pause the video, find where I made my mistake and give it back to you. Or I'll just copy and paste my old code in. That would be easier. So, uh, next is going to be if, if action name equals, oh, double equals, grab then. All of our stuff is going to come, come in between here because um, when you click down and it calls the grab function, it sees, hey, what's what's the action that you're trying to perform? If you wanted to click on something else for like context or open doors, stuff like that, you could always bind that to a different um, key or something else, right? And this grab action, whenever you uh, call it, it would um, see what action that is and it would call that instead. So. All right. So the first thing we do is we check, hey, are we going to try and grab? Yes. Next, we want to do if user input state is equal to enumeration dot user input state dot start. Oh, dot begin. Then. So. Oh, that's if. Uh, and we're also going to do an else, right? So let's put a comment in here, start grab. And we need an, an else, else if user input state equals enumeration dot user input state dot end, then, <clears throat> oh, I did the thing, didn't I? There we go. Uh, stop grab. That way we have a couple little markers in there and we know what our code's doing. Kind of cleans it up a little bit. Makes it a little bit easier to follow. <clears throat> okay. So, we're going to check the magnitude. And the reason we want to check the ma oh, okay. Let's leave that in there, because that, that's nice. Um, local magnitude, M magnitude equals, uh, mouse, what? equals mouse dot hit dot position minus character dot head dot C frame dot position dot 
magnitude. Okay, so I know that was a lot to follow along with, and I highly recommend if you're watching this video, watch the video first and then follow along later. Otherwise, you're you're not going to comprehend or, or you're you're not going to retain as much information. You're just going to be copying code. And what I want you to do is understand what is actually happening. So uh, that is a single equals, not a double equals. So basically what we're doing is we're getting where the mouse hit and where the character's head is. Okay. And if it's, if it's greater than 10, then we don't want to grab. But if it is, or it, sorry, if it's greater than 10, we don't want to grab. But if it's less than 10 units away, then we want the, the player to be able to grab it. And you can put this to any distance that you want, but it, if you have it too far out, it will look really weird when it happens because it's, it'd be like using the force and like grabbing something towards you. So, um, if, oh, that's gonna get all kinds of junked up. Okay, if magnitude is less than 10, then, and this is where the actual grab comes into play. If mouse dot target, then, there's a lot of if statements in here, isn't there? Did I do an else on that? I did not. So we want to check to see that the mouse actually had a target whenever you clicked on it. Um, and if it did, then we can start uh, filling out some of our things. So grab object is equal to the mouse dot target. Uh, grab start, we can set to true because now we're we are actually grabbing onto something. Then we're going to create a local drag ball, local drag ball equals create drag ball. And then we're going to say the drag balls C frame is equal to our mouse dot hit. So we're going to place the drag ball on the point that we clicked for the object. Uh, dragger equals drag ball. I guess we don't need to set dragger, do we? Oh yeah, we do. We do. So the, the dragger up here at the top, this one, this is going to be used to stop the drag later on. So dragger equals drag ball. Uh, we need to add a filter because we don't, uh, if you grab the, grab the object and then the camera somehow gets in front of the object, it's, it, we need to filter it out. The object can't be part of our mouse hit. So mouse dot target filter equals grab object, the, the object that we grabbed. Um, let's go ahead and After the drag ball, or it won't attach properly. I guess it wouldn't attach. Local drag ball, we need to weld in between the drag ball and the grabbed object. So, local, whoa. Drag ball weld equals weld between. And our first part is the drag ball itself and the grab object. Just like that. Next, we're going to add a mover to the drag ball or to the, the dragger. I guess you could say drag ball or dragger. You, you could use either one and would reference the same part. So here comes the cool loop. While dragger do. So this right here says, hey, while that dragger is still an object, I'm going to start moving around and doing stuff. Uh, let's see. We need to create an array. No, just array. And a ray from the user's head to the mouse. Basically, we want to create a ray. And that ray is going to be when you click on an object somewhere around the area or whenever the mouse is, 
that ray is going to be centered on your head and pointing at where the mouse is. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense because you, if you don't set the distance on a ray, you could get that thing going flying out there, coming way too close. This is to restrict it to just movement within a certain range and always being a certain distance away from the character, same as uh, as it is inside uh, Lumber Tycoon 2. Uh, have you ever noticed like when you're close to an object, like when you're close to an object and you grab it, it kind of shoots out like this and then it's at a constant spot. Or if it's just a little out of range, you grab it and it pulls it in to a certain spot. That's what we're trying to do. You want to restrict that movement to a specific distance in between you and the object itself. Not the mouse and not the uh, not the camera, but the character itself. So, local CF, which is going to be standard for C frame, is going to be C frame dot new, and we want it to start at the character's head. <clears throat> Wait, CF. Yeah, character dot head dot position and then mouse dot hit dot position so uh, the C frame is going to be at our head pointing at where the mouse is hitting and then the dragger dragger dot mover dot position equals C frame plus C frame dot look vector times 10 dot position. I don't know why I did dot position there. Do I need dot position? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because the dragger move position is gonna be at that position. So it's gonna be at the C frame of our head, looking at, at the look vector, which is wherever we're pointing, times 10. And then dragger dot rot mover. Did we say rot mover down below? Yeah, rot mover right there. I think this is the long, long version C frame equals. Okay. Now kind of follow along with this because this one's this one's going to be a doozy. All right, so the first thing we need is our camera's C frame. Camera, whoa, Z camera, camera dot C frame, fram C frame, C frame times C frame dot angles dragger dot rot offset dot value dot x yeah dragger dot rot offset dot value dot y dragger not drag ball, dragger. Dra dragger, dragger, dot offset. No, sorry. Rot offset dot Z. Do I do anything at the end there? No, that's it. Whoa, don't want to tap on that one over there. Mess up the source code. Okay. <sighs> Let me double check my spellings on all of this. Make sure I, I didn't miss something. Dragger dot rot mover dot C frame. Why is camera not pulling up? Is it do code do do we do local? Did we miss camera? Hold on. Where's camera at over here? Because I know I had it working earlier. Oh, did I completely miss it up there at the top? I did. Silly goose me. 
So head back up to the top. You're going to need this local uh, camera equals game dot workspace dot current camera. That way we can call it later on in our script down here, which is where I messed up. So um, dragger is the equivalent of drag ball. And inside the drag ball, we've got, whoa, we've got a C frame called uh, our offset. So basically what this is saying is it's going to times angles of our offset with the current camera's C frame. <clears throat> Wherever our camera's looking, that's the, the frame that it's going to hold. So if you're, if you're holding it and you change camera angles, does it move and change too? I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's move down. Um, if it gets to the end, oh, and this ends. So if the dragger gets deleted, then we need to do a couple of things. Let's go ahead and clear the mouse target. Target, oh, mouse dot target filter equals nil and end. So that ends the target. That ends the magnitude. So we're good. Okay. So in the event that we stop grabbing, we're going to do this. Um, game object, not game object. Yeah. Grab object. Grab object equals nil. Uh, grab start equals false. And then we're going to check because there's sometimes that it'll delete and it cycles through again and to check to see if it's got a, a dragger. And if the dragger is not there, you can't set it to a nil. So we need to check if there's a dragger and if there is, then we delete it. So if dragger, then dragger colon destroy. And then dragger, dragger equals nil. And I think I did the last part just as a, an extra precaution because sometimes you would destroy it and it's not quite done yet. But if you do all this in the same function, even if there's a little bit of residual before the dragger actually stops, then we set it to nil. So on the next cycle, it doesn't matter anyway. Hopefully I've done everything correctly. Let's go back over here. We already have one part in there, but uh, for aesthetics, I'm going to go over to model. We're going to go to scale and we're going to do one move studs like that. And pull this out just a little bit like that. Uh, and then we can set this to material of wood and brown. So kind of looks like a plank right there. Um, I don't like that color. Maybe that color. No, that's like pukey color. Let's do it brown brown. Ooh, there we go. A nice oak color. Yeah, that's good. And let's duplicate that a couple times. Uh, let's see. Move. Control D. Control D. Control D. There we go. Control D. We'll move up, up, and over like that. That doesn't really work. So hold on. We can do 0.5. There we go. And just delete that last one right there. So, F5, hopefully everything worked. Hopefully I typed everything correctly. Let's give it a try. Oh, we got we got breaks. We got bad errors. Okay. Context action service uh, unexpected error happened while calling the callback and attempt to call a C frame value. And uh, it looks like line 26. So, dragball.c frame. Oh, was that supposed to be dragger? Dragball.c frame equals mouse hit. Oh, that's not a function. Take that out. Stop. And that was supposed to be capitalized as well. So, where was dragball? Ooh, I had uh, 85 other people have followed me. Nice. 
Okay, there's hit, and that's supposed to be a capital H. Hit. Now it's not hit. Save. Don't need to save. Play. Okay, wish me luck. Here we go. First person view. Click. Uh-oh, we got breakage again. Let's go see where we're at. Line 38. Oh, that's the long one. Poop. I knew I'd miss that one. Okay. So, Z is not a valid member of cframe.workspace.offset. Oh, we forgot dot value. Dot value. Don't need to save. Stop. And play. Oh, by the way, it's always a good idea to stop the script first or stop the game first before programming because it might not change. All right. Oh, oh gosh. I've got a lock up. Oh no. Please tell me that it it saved. Okay. Script timeout exhausted execution time. Oh, that's why. Stop. Okay. Inside my script, I forgot to put a wait. <laughs> so it's a it's a really fast loop and nothing else can happen while it's happening. So let's just call a wait. No nothing in, in the middle. So it's it's an instant wait, but it'll allow other things to happen. Oof. Oh, that was that was scary. I was worried that it was going to crash right there. Okay, last one. Oh, and click. Oh, it ain't moving. Oh no, did I weld something wrong? Oh wait, wait. Eureka! Eureka, Eureka, Eureka. Okay, is this working with all of them? It is. Nice. So now that we're all set, you now have a grabber inside your game. And real quick, this will work with any loose object. Any object that is is uh, not dropped down, it, it can grab onto. So let's just open up just for fun. Let's go over to, where is view? Toolbox. And uh, axe. Let's look up axes. Let's see if defaultio's axes are in there. Uh, axe, 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 bunch of axes. Ooh, look at that. That's the steel axe. Uh-oh. Now, one thing I always do is I check through to see that there's no actual like malicious scripts in there at all. But it looks like there's no handle. So I don't think that this is an actual thing. Oh, it is definitely a loose object though. So can I grab it? Yes, I can. We can definitely grab it. So, look at that. Yay. Now, there's there's another part to this. Um, if you hold shift, you have to be able to take that input and then translate it into the C-frame to do the rotation of the objects itself. But here is its code in entirety. I hope you had fun joining along. Um, and this should work for most people's needs for just grabbing things inside world. Um, like I said, there's a lot more to doing this in like my lumber and inside lumber tycoon to it itself. Um, the, the hold shift to rotate. That's a, that's a big one. Even I had a lot of trouble figuring out the C frames and everything else. And it's still not quite right inside my lumber, but um, if you've enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more of this video, like, comment, and subscribe down below. Hit the bell, notifications, blah, 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 blah. Do all that stuff that, you know, I'm supposed to market to you as a, a YouTuber. And I'm supposed to say stuff like, hit it now, and blah, blah, blah. But don't. It, that's not why I want you to do it. I want you to subscribe, like, comment, notification, if you want. 
If, you, if it so pleases you to do so, then do it. If not, there's nothing I like. I don't want to push you to actually do that. Love you guys very much. Um, we'll talk to you very soon. Happy Friday. Outro.